Hello again everybody at Vintage Iron Range Dirt Track Racing. I am joined today by Latonia's Shaddy Ruzich, although Shaddy is pretty much an ordained Kelly Laker. Uh, Shaddy, it's great to have you here. Thanks for taking time out and stopping in. That's good. Uh, what got you interested in dirt track racing? Well, when I was a kid, my Uncle Bruno sponsored a car, 44, driven by Ed Sabatini. And when I, we used to go to races every Thursday night, watch races, and I kind of got interested. I figured, well, someday I think I'd like to do that. Was this like when you were a teenager? Before, maybe 12 years old. Oh, really? Okay, and, and Bruno's was a body shop here at Hibbing. Right. And then on Thursday nights, you went to Hibbing and watched? Yeah. So they ran Thursday nights Thursday at that Thursday nights at that time. And yes. like, w w was that like in the 50s when it... Yeah, re early 50s. So that's when the track kind of rekindled itself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who, when you were young watching these races, who were some of the racers that you looked up to? Well, Ed Sabatini, uh, Mike Mikich, George Koski, Coy Vistos, uh, Ruben Olson. I can't remember the other ones. Okay. Uh, so sitting up in the stands as a kid, it just gave you to the desire that you wanted to jump in and give it a whirl. Right. Okay. When did you actually start racing then for yourself? Well, I got on the service in 62, and Hibbing wasn't racing then, but Grand Rapids was, and I had, had me and a friend of mine, Jim Krause, we had a, about a 49 Oldsmobile, <clears throat> and we got that already, and we went to Rapids and raced that maybe twice, and then uh, Richie Milovich wanted to drive it one night. He said he could win the feature with it. Well, anyway, he wrecked it, and that was the end of my racing in 62. <clears throat> and then Dale Neuschwander and Jerry Gabina started. Uh, me and Donnie Oz went round and round about this, but I said that they started in 63 or 64. And I, like Donnie and Bobby Girardi and I don't know, the other guys that, uh, they didn't race it that first year that Jerry Gabin and them had it. But I raced, and uh, I think Donny Oz and them were into drag racing at that time in down the cities. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I called Dale Nooshwander and asked him if he remembered what year they ran it, started it, and he couldn't remember either. So, so you started in 62, real short-lived. Yep, and then 63, I bought a car from uh, Fellow by the name of Castle out of from Rapids. Mm -hmm. I think I paid twenty five dollars, and we brought that home. Erased that. Probably relation to the castles that are still running to this day. I would say so. It's you know they. I would think they were, okay. but uh, I'm not sure. But then I started racing. I I rolled over, wrecked a few cars. I had uh, Vern Chandler. He welded up, fixed them up for me, and whatever. And, he put a set of roll bars in one car for me, but uh, yeah, it was. So your first car was a 49 Olds then? Yeah. But sh very short lived. Yeah, maybe two races. Okay. Two um, weekends. Your number for the majority of your career then was number 44. Right. How, how did you come upon that number? Ed Sabatini's number. Okay, so you picked it just because you liked Ed. Right. Okay. Uh, you also raced a number two for a short right. period of time? Yeah. Uh, I, well, I uh, I raced with for Benny Orlando for a while. And uh, so you were his a number you, was two. You were a hired gun for Benny Orlando. Yeah. Okay. I think Roger raced up before him. Roger Carlson. Roger Carlson. Okay. And, and then you ended then up I doing it. Yeah. Do you remember what all different type of cars did you race in your throughout your entire career? Well, in the flathead Fords mostly. And then I, the one year I bought a Dodge Dart from uh, Rosine and uh, I raced that. And then I had a Cuda. I raced that. And that was about it. So you Just raced in the 60s for a stint. Yeah. And then you quit for a little bit. Right. And then you raced in the 80s for another stint. 70s and then. Okay. Okay. Uh, no, all your cars. 
those were all factory cars that were turned into race cars. Right. And you kind of commissioned someone to kind of build a new one for you at one point, the the one that was welded up. Yeah, well, the one guy rolled me from uh, International Falls. He wrecked me pretty hard. And, well, Jojo Terzik says I went as high as a telephone pole and came down. And all I can remember when I was rolling, ain't this thing ever going to quit? <laughs> and uh, I had the wind knocked out of me. And Carl Fran came in. I was upside down, and Carl Fran came in and unbuckled me and pulled you up. pulled me down and huh. pulled me out of the car. But That's a pretty tough way to earn a case of beer. Yeah, um, there's easier <laughs> ways to get a case of beer. Um, so, do you remember uh, you had one built new though, kind of for yourself? But you bought most of your cars from other people then to race. Right. Right. Okay, and that this was all well before manufactured chassis were around. Right. Okay. <clears throat> you just took a car and cleaned it all out, took the glass all out, put the roll bars in it, and that was your race car. Okay, okay. Uh, and, and how long did you race? How many years did you race for? Well, if you, if on you had enough, it all, yeah. probably 10. M maybe 10 years or so. Okay. Uh, why did you end up quit, quitting racing? Well, money. I worked for the city on the fire department and there wasn't much money if you have a family of two or three kids and mm -hmm. the money was... Uh, so the priorities uh, took over. And, right, you know, right. You know. uh, now, what what did you accomplish as a racer uh, as far as like on the track, racing, wins, what and whatnot? Well, I wasn't really a... had a win driver. I just enjoyed driving. I had fun. After the races, we had more fun. Uh, I think at that time we got paid for the heat races and paid for a feature. So you, you get two checks, uh -huh. and they probably amounted to about seven or eight dollars, maybe at that time. Well, it might have been better money at the time. Yeah, than I, yeah. But you'd go to the garden lounge, put them on the bar, and so you love the camaraderie <coughs> races, right? Right. But you did pretty good yourself. I mean, you didn't dominate, but you won your fair share of races. Well, I, I don't know how many I won, but Mac and Skeeter probably won more in one month than I ran, did in, in 10 years. But That's still a lot of races. <laughs> they win a lot. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, this concludes part one with our interview with Shadi Ruzic. Please stay tuned for part two.